This is problem number two from section 1.1. In this problem it says, find the domain and range of the following function. You'll see that we have a, a radical function, and inside that radical function we have a polynomial. Uh, if they want us to find the domain, uh, we're going to have to go through and do some solving algebraically to find that. So let's start by talking about uh, the domain of just a normal radical function. So if I have just g of x equal root x, the domain for that function, well, I can never take the radical of a negative, so the domain for this function would be 0 to infinity. And we didn't include the 0 because 0 does work for this radical function. So for a normal radical function, we have to have inputs into the radical that are from 0 to infinity. That means that x squared minus 9x has to give you a number that is at least 0 or greater. So the first thing I'm going to do to find the domain is I'm going to say that x squared minus 9x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now you'll notice that we have a uh, polynomial inequality. And how do we solve a polynomial inequality? We start by saying that replacing the greater than or equal sign with an equal sign. So we'll say x squared minus 9x equals 0. And we're going to find the roots. So we factor out x. We get x, x minus 9 equals 0. And then we can say, using the zero product property, that x equals 0, or x minus 9 equals 0. So x equals 0, or x minus 9 equals, oh, I should add the 9 over. So x, when I add the 9 over, x equals 9. So my two roots are 0 and 9. Now to solve a polynomial inequality, I draw a number line. And at this point, I mark 0 and 9 on the number line. And I'm going to pick points in between 0, 9, and outside of 0, 9. And I'm going to look for uh, the solution sets, essentially. So I'm going to look for, let's check negative 1. Let's check 1, because 1's between 0 and 9. Negative 1's less than 0. And let's pick 10. And I'm going to use my calculator to kind of check these for me. So I'm going to say that I want to store negative 1 is x, so negative 1, store it as x, and then I want to take and type in x squared minus 9x, and then hit enter. And you'll notice I get 10. So I ask myself, is 10 greater than or equal to 0? Right? I'm checking this inequality. I got 10 when I plugged in negative 1. Is 10 greater than or equal to 0? Yes, it is. So this is an area where I have solutions to this polynomial inequality. I check 1. So I say 1 stored as x. Grab the function. I get negative 8. Is negative 8 greater than or equal to 0? No. And last but not least, 10 stored as x. And then I'm going to... Uh, check that by grabbing that function again. I get 10. 10 greater than or equal to 0. It also works. So for x squared minus 9x being greater than or equal to 0, that happens from negative infinity up to 0. Because obviously if I plug in 0, I still get 0. So this includes the root because of the equal sign. And union uh, from 9 all the way up to infinity. So what's that mean about the domain? Well, I know that the domain of a radical function is going to be basically outputs from, well, out, the domain for a radical function, a regular radical function, goes from 0 to infinity. So x squared minus 9x has to give me something greater than 0. Well, I know that occurs when I'm between negative infinity and 0 and 9 and infinity. So this is actually the domain of the function. And all we had to do to find that domain is, with this radical, is set the inside greater than or equal to 0 and solve that to figure out the domain. Now the last part is finding the range. Now the range is just talking about what are the, what are the outputs for the entire function. Well, the outputs for the entire radical function are going to be what are going to be from 0 to infinity. 
right? Because what's the smallest number that I can, can get when I do the radical of this function? Well, the smallest number I can get is zero because that's the smallest number that I can input, right? And root of zero will be zero. And I get that when I plug in the nine, right? Nine squared minus nine times nine will give you 81 minus 81. So if I plug in any other number, I get a number larger than, larger than that, which is 81 minus 81 is zero. So my range is actually from zero to infinity because that's what the y values could give me. And let's take a look at that function. I'm gonna graph it actually on my TI-84 here, just to make sure. So we're gonna go to y equals, and we're gonna type in root x squared minus nine x. And you gotta remember that you're going to go to window once you're done with that, I'll hit enter, then I'll go to window, Make sure I've got negative 10, 10, 1, negative 10. All right, we're good. We're going to hit the graph button. Now look at that function. And actually, if I zoom out, I, you would be able to see this a little better. So let's go to window. Let's make this negative 10, 10 is fine there. But we want to go x min at negative 10 and x max at, let's go 20 just so we see the right side of this a little bit better. So you can see the lowest possible point for this, for this function, when we're talking y values, is zero. So that's why the range is zero to infinity because range goes from zero all the way to infinity. And our domain, this function only is only defined between negative infinity and zero in the x direction and nine to infinity here. So that's how we know that we found the domain and we can check it with a graph.